Hi, I'm Rob from Resurface.io, and I'll be giving you a quick introduction to usage logging and comparing usage logging against other common types of logging solutions. Let's start with a basic definition that fits on one slide. Usage logging is selectively logging the requests and responses going to and from an application, in this case a cloud-based microservice. This is done by adding a small logger library to the application we want to monitor. The logger selectively records HTTP calls to and from the application, including details about the HTTP request, HTTP response, and active user session. These HTTP calls can originate from web browsers, or mobile apps, or business-to-business -business integrations, or even from bots. On the back end, Resurface.io creates meaningful and actionable data sets from the raw data provided. These data sets include real HTTP calls and partial or complete user sessions, all recorded using responsible privacy protections. These data sets give the visibility needed to drive improvements in application quality, user experience, and business performance. Another way to define usage logging is with a real example. This story begins with a travel agency that is selling airline tickets online. One day, the accounting department realizes in a panic that invalid orders are being processed. Some, but not all, airline tickets are being sold at very low prices. So the challenge is to figure out why this problem is going on, and of course this falls to the DevOps team to triage. Could this be an infrastructure problem like a service being down? First, the DevOps team searches across available server logs, reflecting the health of their server infrastructure, but sees nothing out of the ordinary. Could this be some kind of runtime error, like a database failure or other runtime exception in the application? The DevOps team consults their error reporting system, but again sees nothing unusual. Could this be some kind of performance error, like a service timing out and returning invalid data? Nope. The DevOps team checks their user monitoring system and sees the website running nice and fast. It's only when the DevOps team gathers some real usage data that the nature and scope of the problem becomes clear. There are some users, in this case user number three, where corrupt airline rates are being provided by the app, which then allows those users to purchase airline tickets very cheaply. Finally, the problem is clearly visible and the corrupt data is quickly fixed. These types of silent failures are very insidious because they fly under the radar of most logging systems. In this case, there were no database exceptions or obvious runtime problems, no slowdowns in performance or obvious outages. In fact, the application was technically healthy and running fast, which actually deepened the financial loss to the business as word got out and more and more users rushed in to buy cheap tickets. As a final remediation step, the DevOps team configures a new data stream where any valid orders will be ignored, but any orders at an unacceptably low price will be recorded. Should this sort of problem occur again, the organization will be prepared to react quickly and to limit the damage. Hopefully that last example gives a better idea of just how valuable these data sets based on real user activity can be. We didn't just have metrics and dashboards about user conversion rates, but actual user session data that we could mine and make actionable. But if you were listening closely, you probably noticed this example really referenced two different data sets, or what we'll subsequently be calling data streams. There was the initial data stream of sessions logged to track down the error. This stream was initiated and owned by the DevOps team to track down that specific problem. This first stream was short-lived, just active as long as the problem was being diagnosed, and then turned off. Then there was a second and much more selective data stream, configured to only contain users with unacceptably cheap orders. This stream was used to detect recurrence of a specific problem, and this seems intended to be active for a long time. And honestly, we're hoping we never get any data showing up in that stream. So while this simple model here is a good way to visualize usage logging at first as a single data set or a single data stream on the back end, ultimately it's more interesting to have multiple decentralized data streams as in this example. Here we have several different microservices sending data to several different data streams, 
all at different levels of detail. Some streams contain just HTTP calls, where others contain partial or complete user sessions. A single microservice can send data to more than one data stream at once, and a single data stream can accept data from more than one microservice at once. This level of flexibility and control is important because we need to be able to associate any data logged back to a specific intended business purpose and ensure that data is only available to the people that have a justifiable need, even in the context of rapidly changing microservice architectures. Our travel agency example touched on the different types of logging solutions that are common today, including server logging, error logging, and traditional user monitoring. Let's go deeper into how these solutions actually work, what features they provide to their customers, and how this compares with usage logging. In all these cases, we'll have a microservice that we intend to monitor, and ultimately some kind of data will be sent to a remote logging service. Server logging solutions are pretty common with cloud-based apps. These are services like Logly and PaperTrail that we all know and love. In this case, an agent is installed that collects and ships server logs to the remote service. These are logs of server events, like processes starting up or shutting down, where each event has a timestamp and a severity. The logging service aggregates and indexes these server events, allowing administrators to search for events meeting specific criteria. The logging service also provides ability to alert administrators when certain types of server events are noted. This is all very useful, but with server logging, the collection of personally identifiable information is typically avoided because of all the additional privacy and security requirements that would have to be met by those systems. Server logging solutions are typically very cloud and DevOps friendly, but they tend to aggregate all customer data into a centralized repository managed by the third-party provider. Error logging solutions are also popular for cloud-based apps. These are services like Rollbar and Bugsnag that are really helpful. In this case, a library is installed into the application that traps any unhandled runtime exceptions. These error events are then sent to the remote logging service, alerting administrators and assisting them in triaging the problem. These solutions often record some helpful details about the user sessions where errors occurred. However, these solutions don't tell us anything about successful usage of the application, just how the app failed. Like server logging solutions, error logging solutions are typically cloud and DevOps friendly, but they also tend to centralize all customer data into a single repository. Next, let's look at user monitoring, a broad category that includes solutions like web analytics, like Google Analytics, and real user monitoring, like what New Relic offers. Whatever these systems are called, they all basically work the same way. Here an agent, often a JavaScript library, is downloaded to the user device and runs inside the browser or mobile app. This agent tracks activity on the device and uploads data back up to the remote logging service. This is popular as this requires no real changes to the application and does allow all kinds of helpful dashboarding and alerting functions. But this approach is increasingly controversial and problematic. For mobile devices, this wastes battery life and network bandwidth without providing any benefit to end users. It's no wonder that an increasing number of people use ad blockers to prevent these kinds of agents from running. Network monitoring is our last category and takes a completely different tack from what we've seen so far. These solutions don't require changing the application, but nevertheless have high startup cost. Here a tap is installed on the network between the application and its users, literally like a wiretap in a spy movie. This network tap feeds into a packet sniffer, a very sophisticated device which decodes and interprets network traffic. Now it's not easy to decode user activity and application behavior just by listening on the network, so sniffers require a lot of configuration to make sense of what's really going on. It's difficult to downright impossible to keep this sniffer configuration in sync with quickly evolving apps. But the biggest drawback is that sniffers are geared towards first-party data centers where the customer owns and controls the entire network, and that's just not true in the cloud. 
Sniffers on cloud networks face all kinds of technical and practical hurdles, and this approach simply isn't a great fit for cloud applications. With Resurface I.O., usage logging is done by adding a logger library into the application, just like any other library that the application might use. This logger library selectively provides HTTP and user session data, either to Resurface I.O. as a third party or to first-party private infrastructure. Usage logging has no impact to the user device and can't be blocked by an ad blocker, since this all happens in the cloud. Resurface I.O. incorporates a privacy-by-design philosophy and has responsible protections for the personally identifiable information that is intentionally collected. We believe usage logging pairs nicely with popular solutions for server logging and error logging and even traditional user monitoring. We don't want to displace your existing logging solutions, only to extend your visibility by responsibly collecting usage data. As a next step, we have several videos on our YouTube channel showing off our free demo environment. We'll show you how to install a single logger that sends data to a private demo session identified by a unique URL. Our demos make it easy to get started, no user registration or credit card is required, and step-by-step -step instructions are provided. And we never share your demo data with anybody, including our own staff. Once you have a demo session running, you can use this to start trying out different data protection rules. These rules control what user activities are logged and how much detail will be collected. There's a lot of functionality here, so again, check our YouTube channel for further information. When you quit your demo session, all your data will be immediately destroyed. And if you don't explicitly quit your demo session, all your data will still be destroyed, since we completely rebuild our demo environment every 24 hours. When you've tried out the demo environment and are ready to start monitoring live production applications, Resurface I.O. will be here to help you deploy and manage a set of decentralized data streams to fit the behaviors you're trying to understand and the problems you're trying to solve. Please check out our other videos on YouTube for more tips and tutorials. If you have questions or need help, you can always send us an email or join our Slack channel. Contact information is on our website at Resurface I.O. Thanks!